Hello everyone, I'm Evan. Welcome to Small World Gaming. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and play Fleet the Dice Game with the Dicey Waters expansion. Fleet the Dice Game is a roll and write game for one to four players designed by Ben Pitchback and Matt Riddle and published by Eagle Griffin Games. It was successfully kickstarted back in May of 2018 and just recently received a new edition that made minor changes to the score pads. I'll go over the differences in the two editions at the end of the video. A new expansion called Dicey Waters was recently released in November of 2020 that adds a new small fishing village sheet. For this video, we'll be setting up for a three player game. Each player receives one boat sheet and one town sheet. With the Dicey Waters expansion, you also get one fishing village sheet. To create the dice pools, you'll take a number of boat dice equal to the number of players plus one. So our boat dice pool will be four dice. The town dice pool is made up of a number of town dice equal to the number of players, plus one boat die. So for us, it will be three town dice, plus one boat die. Next, each player rolls a boat die to determine their starting bonus. If you roll the three coin face, re-roll until you get a fish. For the type of fish you roll, you will fill in the first three boxes under that type. This gives you a license for that fish, and launches your first boat of that type. You're now ready to start playing. Fleet is played over 10 rounds. Every round has a boat phase, income phase, and town phase. Every even numbered round also has a fishing phase between the income and town phases. The goal is to have the most points at the end of the game. Points are scored for the number of fish caught, each boat you launch, licenses gained, buildings constructed, and any other special bonuses you may have from buildings or the King Crab license. The overall gameplay is very simple. However, there's a lot of little special rules on the sheets, so I'll save going over those for the end after we go over how to play. To begin play, randomly choose a player to be the first player and have them roll the boat dice. Starting with the first player and going clockwise, each player will choose one of the dice. This is your chosen die. Once everyone has selected their die, this will leave one die left. This is the communal die, and everyone gets to take that action. It's important to note the distinction between your chosen die and the communal die, as some special rules will affect the chosen die. These rules may never be used to affect the communal die. Each boat die has each of the fish on the boat sheet plus a three coin face. If you select a fish, simply fill in the next available box under that fish type. Boxes are always filled in top to bottom. You cannot skip boxes. If you select the three coin face, fill in three coins on the coin track. In our example, I took the cod die and the shrimp die was left over. So I fill in a box under cod and a box under shrimp. You also have the ability to take a coin rather than use the face shown on the die. This is the one special rule that can be used with the communal die, though someone choosing to use it for a coin does not affect the other player's ability to use the communal die for its face. This rule is important for the expansion, but we'll get into that later. Anytime you fill a box labeled L or B, you get to choose to either gain a license for that fish type or to launch a boat. Each time you select a license, you get the next upgraded level of that license. It's important to note that license bonuses are replaced by the next higher license. The bonuses are never cumulative. When you gain the second level of a license, you also gain two coins. So fill those in on your coin track. The third level of the licenses grants victory points at the end of the game. Boats are important to the fishing phase and to the end game as each boat is worth victory points, and fish are worth victory points as well. After the boat phase, we go to the income phase. Your income is equal to one coin plus any income bonuses from the lobster license and the Ridback Canning Company in the wharf section. Your income can never exceed 10 coins. Simply fill in the number of coins on your coin track. If it's currently an even numbered round, you will now move into the fishing phase. In the fishing phase, every boat you have launched catches a fish. Simply fill in one fish on each launched boat. The exception is the oyster boats. For those, you have a choice 
of catching two fish, or you can catch one fish and gain one coin. If a boat is full, it cannot catch any more fish. Finally, we move into the town phase. The first player rolls the town dice, and in player order, everyone selects a die, leaving one die as the communal action. The town dice have three faces that correspond to the three sections of the town sheet. The harbor face allows you to fill in a space in the harbor section. The market face earns you coins based on the total number of fish you've caught. The wharf face allows you to fill in a box to construct buildings. The boat die in the pool lets you fill in a box on the boat sheet. As always, any die can be used to take a coin instead of its associated action. And that's how you play a round. Once you're done with a round, pass the first player marker to the left and start the next round. At this point, it's important to discuss star actions. In the course of filling in boxes through normal play, you will gain star actions, either from filling in your coin track, or as a bonus from licenses, or buildings. When you gain a star action, this lets you immediately fill in a box anywhere on your boat or town sheets. Star actions are an important part of Fleet the Dice game, as they can be leveraged into combos, allowing you to fill in more spaces than you could from the dice alone. If you are playing with the Dicey Waters expansion, you will also have the Fishing Village sheet. You cannot use a star action to fill in a box on this sheet. The only time you can fill in a box on this sheet is when you take a die as a coin. Instead of gaining the coin, you can mark a box on the Fishing Village. After 10 rounds, it's time to score. You gain one point for every fish caught. Every boat launched has a victory point amount shown. Total those together for your boat score. Add together any victory points for Tier 3 licenses you have earned. Total the victory points for all buildings constructed. And finally, total together any bonuses gained from Special Building Rules and the King Crab License if you have it. Whoever has the most points is the winner. So that's the overview on how to set up and play. Now we'll dive into each of the sections and discuss all the special rules in the game. There's a lot of them, and they can have drastic effects on your scoring. First, let's take a look at the licenses. A shrimp license lets you use any shrimp die that you take as any other face. For example, if I take a shrimp die, I could count it as a swordfish and mark a box under swordfish instead. At the second level, you get to treat it as any other face, plus you get a star action when you do. Note that you only get the star action when you use the ability of the license. At the third level, using it as a different face counts double and gets you a star action. The COD license grants you one, two, or three coins based on the license level every time you launch a boat. The lobster license adds one, two, or three coins to your income phase every turn. So if you add the level three license, you would get your base one coin income plus three more from the license for a total of four. The swordfish license grants you a star action after you fish. At the second level, you get a star action after fishing plus a coin. And at the third level, you get two star actions after the fishing phase. The oyster license lets you catch two fish in the oyster boats per fishing phase, or catch one fish and gain a coin. The different levels increase the amount of fish the oyster boats can hold. They can hold six, eight, or ten fish, respectively. Now, let's look at the town sheet. The first section is the harbor. Here, you can gain a king crab license in boats. The King Crab License is special in that it only has one level of license and grants you a bonus scoring opportunity at the end of the game. The bonus from this license is capped at 10 points. Additionally, when you gain the license, you immediately choose one of the bonuses, and this bonus is then locked out from all the other players. Only one player can have any particular bonus. Next is the Captain's Club. By filling this in, you can gain personal fishing phases. This is treated exactly like a normal fishing phase. The only exception is the Swordfish License bonus does not count for the personal fishing phase. This is a new rule for the second edition. You can gain up to three additional fishing phases this way. The research vessels hold no fish, but they count as launched boats in regards to the COD License bonus, and they're worth one victory point each. The barge, once launched, acts as an overflow for fish when you have full boats. Normally, if a boat is full, you don't get any fish for it during the fishing phase. If you have the barge, you can fill in one fish per full boat during the fishing phase. The Inuit are two additional boats that can be launched and used in the fishing phase. Next is the market. If you take a market action, simply total up the number of fish you currently have, 
and gain a number of coins based on the total. And finally, there's the wharf. Each building is considered built once you fill in the circle box. Each one is worth victory points at the end of the game and gives you a special ability or bonus victory points. The casino gives you one reroll per turn of your chosen die. Amma's Bank and Trust simply gives you two victory points for each box marked. The Seafood Buffet gives you victory points for providing various fish to it. When you gain a boat die, instead of marking a box on the track corresponding to the face shown, you may instead mark off the matching symbol at the buffet. At the end of the game, you will gain the victory points shown based on how many of the fish you have provided. Each fish can only be marked off once. The Salvage Yard gives you the ability to take a die as a star action. It may be used a maximum of three times. Each time you use it, mark off one of the stars next to the building. The Fisherman's Pub provides 10 victory points. The Bait Shop lets you get two coins when you take a die for coins instead of the usual one coin. The Smokehouse gives you two extra coins when you take the market action. And lastly, the Ridback Canning Company gives you an extra income for each full boat you have. Though remember, your income can never be greater than 10 coins per turn. The Dicey Waters expansion provides an additional fishing village sheet with new buildings on it. As explained earlier, the only way to fill in boxes on this sheet is to take a die as a coin and fill in a box in lieu of taking the coins. The Krusty Credit Union gives you an additional two coins every time you use the three coin die face for a total of five coins gained. The Salty Cap'n Saloon lets you choose one type of fish. Every boat of that type catches one additional fish each fishing phase. The Aquarium lets you fill in one of the spaces every time you use a wharf die. This gives you up to three additional star actions. Note that filling this in is in addition to taking the wharf action. The Lighthouse Motel simply gives a one-time bonus of four coins anytime you want. You can use it immediately or save it for later. Ridback Silvers lets you exchange two coins you have just earned into a fish. Note that you do not gain the coins on the coin track. You are allowed to buy more than one fish if you can afford it. For example, if you just earned seven coins, you could exchange four coins for two fish and receive the remaining three coins. The First Mates Club lets you take a personal fishing phase once it's filled in. Charter Boats lets you use any boat die face to fill in the King Crab Track. The Boat Tours works like the Seafood Buffet. Instead of taking the Town Die face as its action, you can fill in one of the matching spaces. These are worth extra victory points at the end of the game. The last thing I would like to touch on is changes between 1st and 2nd edition. First is the changes to the lobster licenses. 2nd edition no longer ties the income bonus to the number of boats you have launched. 2nd edition has also done away with the fillable income track. On the town sheet, the restriction on the swordfish license for the captain's club was added. Clearer rules for the barge were placed below it on the sheet as opposed to just the extra fish label on the original. Finally, the market added ranges for the total number of fish instead of just the lower threshold on the original. And that's all the changes. I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, or you can tweet them to me and I will respond as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, and remember, live small, leave it all on the table. We'll catch you next time.